how do I round robin tag? So they wanted to have the round robin functionality where you're kind of like either sequentially in order or in some sort of waiting sequence. They wanted to do tags. It doesn't matter whether you're doing tags or custom fields or whatever it is. How do I sort of have like random actions? This is a fun one because we haven't done a walkthrough in a while of Matt actually like showing some of the cool functionality. So if you're just listening to this, know that we're going to be talking through some cool stuff. You should and, find us uh, on YouTube. So find it on YouTube and check it out. If, if you're listening, this is a watcher. I'll, I'll try and talk you through it. But so sometimes I'll do these build with Matt um, calls. We'll just do it inside of the HL Pro Tools community. But um, I wanted to do this kind of like a build with Matt high level hot takes edition. Here was the use case and the question that came in. I think somebody posted inside of the community. It was, how do I round robin tag? So they wanted to have the round robin functionality where you kind of like, uh, either sequentially in order or in some sort of waiting sequence. They wanted to do tags. It doesn't matter whether you're doing tags or custom fields or whatever it is. How do I sort of have like random actions? I saw one person suggest the math function. And unfortunately, it's not quite there. So they were probably thinking like, hey, I could do the math function, pick, you know, whatever, um, uh, this price. And if you had the option of like random, which is what you're thinking of like in Excel, you could do like, do a random number generator between this number and that number. And then, and then that's how it's happening. Sort of random, um, still not perfectly round Robin, but that's what they were kind of thinking is, is random there. Um, I'm sure you could get fancy and keep on like adding one, adding one. And then if it's 10, then go back to zero kind of a thing. Um, so maybe there's some space there. I actually think the uh, it's actually just a sign. So using two workflows and leveraging a sign to user with call it like placeholder users <laughs> to function like to accomplish round robin. So the first step here would be an assigned to user and you're gonna pick out, um, I'm gonna have to pick out two folks and now I can choose equally unevenly. If I have unevenly, I can weight it. So it's gonna round robin. If I'm doing evenly, it's literally just gonna like, you know, equally assign through the user. Here was my advice. We got two workflows. The first one, this is what you're doing. You have assigned to user, it's happening for as many as you need. If you had 10, put in your 10. And that's what's happening there. Then what I would do is, you don't even have to put this entirely, but I put a, a one minute wait in case high levels you know, need some time to process. And then what I would do is remove assigned user. Because I'm doing this with placeholder users, right? Some email nurture things that are going on there are actually related to the user values. And so if you have a user just called like placeholder one, placeholder two, placeholder three, uh, you don't want someone to accidentally receive an email from placeholder one. So this is one of, of the workflows. It would just be, um, this actually, it's round robining the assigned user to these placeholder users. It assigns it to the user running whatever user assignment we want or like whatever sort of like distribution you want and this is the cool thing is you can wait it or, or, uh, you know, un unweight it. Then I would put a one minute wait just to give it process on the other workflow. I'll show you what's going on that side. And then I would remove the assigned user or I would, uh, reassign to like a real user. If you've got like real user data, uh, which you probably do. So who the key account owner is. So this is one of those workflows. Now you're like, what's the trigger mat, whatever you're using, like whenever they're registering, you can manually put people in here. You can do whatever you want, uh, to get it to run through and it's going to assign the user. That's one side of it. So take a picture. This is one half of it. Assigned to user, wait one minute, and then remove assigned user. Then I'm going to delete all of them, show you fresh. Then I'd have my second workflow here, which is um, going to have a trigger based on, a trigger is going to be based on, it's either contact updated to the user assignment or it's just the user assignment here. Let's see if we can do it. So we're going to do contact change, and the change that's happening is the assigned user. And uh, we're going to say it has changed, not in general, it has changed to a specific user, right? So one of those, I had it assigning to Adam. I'm going to call it, you know, it's like assigned to Adam. Recall again, you have placeholder users. So this is only happening because we're using it in the placeholder here, but so it's like it's assigned to that placeholder. And then I'm going to have another trigger. So similarly, for contact changed, what's the change that's happening? The assigned user has changed to, and I forget if we did um, a lead, but I'd be like assigned to, and this is, you know, placeholder two. Yep. There's my two or 10 or 20 triggers that are coming in. And then the first thing I'm going to do is an if else, and I'm going to have a branch per those placeholders. So it's, you know, it's like, this is assigned one. And uh, I'm going to do the workflow trigger, keeps it as simple as possible, is, and then it's my, okay, 
it's not showing this right now because you have to save a workflow. You would have to save the other one, right? You have to save the workflow to see triggers in in the if else function um, or for some of the placeholder information there. So here's our, let's go assigned one and it's just going to be workflow trigger is and then that first one, right? Whichever it is. And then the nice thing is I can keep on duplicating these branches and then changing out the variables. So that was such a small thing that you did because you just get it. But so if someone gets hung up here, build all of those top triggers, hit save, go to the next one, and then, then you'll be able to do the workflow trigger and, and see all of the options. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you put in the triggers, you click the blue save button, then you can see the options in the if else. Um, we actually could, they have a none option in if else. You can clean it up and just use that as your... Um, your fallback branch so you don't even have to have uh your fallback branch but then under here we're going to then do tag if i was doing tags i would add my tag and i would select <laughs> fake news um i would select <laughs> my tag and that's how i would do this now so i'm using I'm just laughing because that's a tag i actually created <laughs> <laughs> there you go so on... so yeah you'd have the that's your round robining of your tags there Yep, you're round robining based on placeholder users, and then you're using one other workflow that has all of these triggers based on the users, these proxy users um, that are then doing these actions, either adding the tag or updating a custom field. Um, so anything like that. I actually recommend using a custom field as opposed to tags. You can still export the data there. The difference is tags come through comma, uh, like comma separated. They could have multiple tags versus for like a custom field, you can have that where it's it's a single option select. So you say it's basically you know you go like a, a um, what's considered a radio option. It can only have one, and you've got your one through ten. And so then the action here is not going to be add tag. It's going to be update contact field. You're going to choose your specific field that you want to update it to, and you're picking one that you know has. Uh, so you would you could have a custom field that has what those tags what those uh descriptors would be no that would never show up anywhere for the user that's just a back yep. but you would use it as a back end then when you're exporting the customer list that now custom field is a single column yep data. just like and so instead of where tags would be like they could have 20 tags associated with the contact it would just be like you know proxy or whatever it is or assigned to and it's just going to have one of those two or 10 options um inside of it yeah, very cool. Hopefully that helped a few people. You know, there's so many things that you can do. Some of these things, there's recipes or there's pretty simple and others take really understanding the complexities and the the uh, capabilities of what high level does out of the box. If you're new learning, you're like, man, this was awesome. How do I get more of this? One, inside of HL Portals, we do that. Two, if you haven't been on it, I do host a call. It's hlportals.com forward slash free dash snapshot. I give you a free snapshot. And I'm like live there doing the call. So if you want to ask me some particular questions, it's inside of high level. It's intended to help you, you know, get your baby steps going so you can start making money from it. But um, yeah, happy to be available on Zoom anytime.